uh, scaling for second trimester. As you said, this is only if mum's belly's popped out, she's not feeling right, she's getting sore wrist, she's getting sore pelvis. All these are scalable movements uh, for what she's been doing. Um, also, you need to be watching out for that dome. Please look at that video, you know what it looks like. So, what we got, same as the first trimester here, 78%, always do the talk test, see if they can respond in full sentences. They should not be straining with weights. Uh, we've got the box jumps, the step ups, the two, one, three, 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 scaling uh, for the first trimester. Burpees over by step overs and rope climbs lying down. We then come to the other movements like push ups, burpees, and down ups. So if mum's belly's popped out, she may not feel happy about going all the way to the floor. Then all you do is you raise the surface. So you can put a box underneath her, she can put her hands on the box, scoot her feet up, and clap, or you can just put a plate. It's just about raising the surface until they feel comfortable. You also have to raise the surface if you suspect that any doming is going on. Raise the surface until you can't see the ab gap getting pushed by and the doming happening. Right. Uh, v ups, hollow rocks, sit ups, and crunches. Normally, mum doesn't feel good about doing these in the first trimester going into the second. Um, your variations of that is plank. Right. However, once again, if you see any doming of the plank, raise mum onto her hands. If you still see some doming, raise the surface again, go on a box, elbows on a box, hands on a box. Um, you can also do glute bridges. Now this depends how mum comfortable mum feels on her back. Okay? So mum, towards the late uh, uh, part of the second trimester, mum shouldn't be lying on her back for too long. However, if she's on her back for a split second, raises the bum, comes back down, raises the bum, she should be alright. But that's totally up to mum and how she feels. It can cause dizziness, so uh, just be aware of that one. All we're doing is adding variations into the core movements. As they slowly get taken away from mum, as her belly gets bigger, uh, we want to give them as many options as we can. We've got ring rows and the footy of TVA, the transverse abdominis. So this may not look like a core movement, however, what you're going to emphasize to mum is pulling her tummy towards the spine and squeezing the bum. So when she does her ring rows, it's really nice and controlled. She's not falling into it, roll the shoulders back and down, everything's engaged, pull the tummy towards the spine and squeeze the bum. This just gives variation because we end up towards the um, uh, second and third trimesters, uh, it all ends up being plank and side planks. So we want to give mum as much variation as we can. Uh, with ollie lifting, uh, we take that away as soon as mum's bum gets uh, big enough. And you know when it's got big enough when you can see them curling the bar around because they don't want to go near the belly. Now, the reason we take ollie lifting out, I know that a lot of people do ollie lifting right at the end, is it promotes bad technique. So what mum is going to learn doing is doing that, and if she's doing that for a good 16 weeks, when she comes back to lifting, her balance will be off and she will have uh, an incorrect technique. So, the variations, we do kettlebell and dumbbell snatch and clean and jerk. So we teach mum how to do the snatch and clean and jerk. We've done a video of that, of Hannah. Uh, when we did the video, it was her first day of doing it. Uh, so she wasn't quite proficient at it, but you can see her belly was sticking out, her, her uh, Olympic lift, she was already going out away from her belly trying to uh, um, not hit it. Uh, so we were teaching her how to do the snatch, clean and jerk. And it's a good movement to perfect anyway. Uh, we, the other options are mum can take the bar onto the rig and she can do front squats, she can do thrusters and she can do push press off the rig. So instead of getting the bar off the ground during a workout, we load the bar up on the rig and let her just stand by the rig and take it on and off from there. Uh, strict press the very, very high intense abdominal movement. You really need to watch out for uh, the ab gap and the doming in a strict press. A variation, you can drop the weight on the strict press, or mum can do single arm kettlebell press. Pull-ups as well, also a big abdominal movement that changes to ring rows. Once again, emphasizing pulling the tummy in towards the spine and squeezing the bum. Front squats, uh, the reason we put front squats in is because of the risks. 95% of the girls who've been through here who've been pregnant 
and postpartum their wrists are sore. So we change the front squats to goblet squats, take uh, the pressure off the wrists. Squats, the reason I've just put squats as its own here uh, and box squats is because if mum feels at any point there's a little bit of pelvis pain due to relaxing, uh, she can do a box squat. So this is a box squat, she's just going to squat down to the box, touch it with the ball, stand up, she knows she's got to parallel, any further she might feel a bit of pelvis pain, uh, so this should be a comfortable squat for her. And this is all uh, options, because uh, it can get a little bit boring for mum if she keeps doing plank, 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 um, but basically all you are doing is see how mum's doing, watching that ab gap, and keep asking them how they're feeling. Any kind of doming, you raise the surface if they're on the floor, if they're on the rig, take the weights down or change to single arm movements.